<laughs> Alright, we can just start. I already know the fucking opening of this video is just gonna be that fucking wave of RR. Alright, so this first build looks like this. It is a Cole 3 Fatalis helmet set. It has stun resist 3, which is the most important part of this. You bring these to matchups where you want coalescence, but you still might get stunned. Things like Kirin, things like Damiel. It also uses the Alpha Dragon Claws because honestly, there's really not much else you can add to this thing, so I just decided to use it because it fit. You can replace uh, this Phoenix Jewel here with Brace if you really want to take this into multiplayer, but otherwise, it's just your pretty standard full raw boosting set with Flight, nothing too complicated about it. You can replace Evasion with uh, things like Protection if you want, things like Maintenance, handi more Handicraft if you really want it. So in the end, it's really up to you, but... I think this is a pretty good starting point to look at as a build. I'd recommend to start it to use this one when you start out, because you're probably not going to be used to the moves, you're, you're going to be used to how the game plays, so you're probably going to get hit a lot, so the stun resist will really come in handy. The next build on the list is the Escadora Arm Guards Power Prolonger build. Personally, I bring these to matchups where I either really want comfy buff up times, or just I can't proc a Cole, because this build can't really fit Cole lessons efficiently. Again, if you want to take this into multiplayer, you can replace like this Handicraft with Brace, something like that. Same thing as the other build, you can swap around these Flawless slash Evasions, just Flawless slash Protection, slash Medicine, slash Maintenance, whatever you want. Uh, this build is honestly cheaper for a lot of people, because the Escadora Arm Guards come with a lot of attack boosts, so you don't need as many attack jewels. You can simply put in like an attack jewel 1 here, and you have attack boost 4, and that'd be good enough. You just start fitting in whatever you really want. But this build is pretty nice. It's pretty comfy for a lot of matchups. I bring it to things like Ruiner, because proccing coal on Ruiner is like getting pinned, and I don't really want to get pinned. So, yeah, this is the second build. Also, because this has Power Prolonger and Stun Resistance, uh, it arguably is more comfy for newer players to get used to the Insect Glaive. So, you could also try this one out. And the final build is the Rhyme Guard Helm build. This is my personal favorite, and the main reason for that is look at the amount of slots on this thing. The best reason to use this over the things like the Fatalis Helmet build, even though they give basically the same skills, is that you can really adapt this build to what you're fighting. So let's say Handicraft 4 is overkill for some random monster I'm fighting. I can just find another random decoration here that I really like and just add it in. It's like, oh man, I don't need Handicraft 4, but I don't know, having Stone Thrower would be really comfy. Just chuck it in there. You can do whatever you want with this build, because there's just that many slots. If you really want to take this into multiplayer, same thing, I'd recommend getting rid of the attack one. It doesn't really change all that much, but you can also, you know, just... But you know, you can also just find any number of race jewels and slam it somewhere in here, as long as you don't get rid of your key skills. It's a really, really nice build. It's really, really versatile and it is for that reason that it's my favorite. This is also probably not the best build to start out playing in Seglave with because you don't get stun resist so you're probably going to get punished a lot if you're new to the weapon. But honestly, if you can get away with using a build like this, just do it. It is by far one of the best. And then for Kinsex, I am a big fan of the Vezier Stag 3-4s. It is the highest damage slow Kinsect in the game. It's really good. If you can get used to getting buffs on this thing, I'd highly recommend doing this. Except, if you're new to the weapon, you want something a bit comfier, you can go for the Foliacat 3 4s. It's the fastest Kinsect. It won't be able to bug drill as much because of how fast it is. And finally, I really like the Gleam Beetle 3 Velox. It is the Kinsect I use for when I want something a bit faster but still does decent damage. Because even though it drops in power, it gains poison, which gives you a nice little bit of, it, like, it makes up a little bit for it. And remember to change your element. I got lazy and just made a Kinsect of every single element for Vezia Stag, because that's the one I use the most. But remember, when you change the element to match the elemental weakness, the Kinsect damage will skyrocket. It is so much better to have a Kinsect element than it is to have no element. Oh, uh, should I explain Kinsect buffs? I guess I should explain Kinsect buffs, but it's not really... Red buff improves your moveset. It gives you access to a lot of moves that are pretty much your bread and butter gameplay. So, this is your highest priority.
White buff makes it so you move faster when unsheathed, giving you a lot more aerial mobility, aerial drift. But it also makes you vault higher. This is your second highest priority. Orange buff will give you a small defense boost, but it also gives you one level of flinch free only when you're attacking. But since you're probably going to be slotting flinch free into your build, it doesn't really matter all that much in multi, and in single player, flinch free just doesn't matter. So, the last, also the last mechanic is the Kinsect Charge mechanic. I won't be going into how, like, what sort of ammos give what sort of Kinsect buffs, how Kinsect bonuses work, all that good stuff. Don't worry about it. It's a bit much for this quick guide, so I just thought I'd tell you that pretty much keep your Kinsect Charge 24-7. That's, that's it. It's the most important thing. And Triple Buff will give you the benefits of all three buffs and all bonuses and it will refresh the time of every single buff so they all run out at the same time. No matter what extracts you get during triple buff, you will never be able to increase the amount of time that buff has. This is really useful for when you get red and white and they're about to run out, so you just quickly get orange and refresh all your cooldowns. There are a few ways to play around buffs during the fight. I personally like to get red and white buff and just let my kin set sort of do the rest. If it picks up a red, I'll refresh it. If it picks up a white, I'll refresh it. If it picks up an orange, I'll just grab triple buff. I don't put that much value on triple buff, even though it is the most damage. But the other way to play around it is just to get triple buff. When it runs out, get it again. But remember when you're getting buffs to kin set charge first, because it will increase the uptime of those buffs. And that's really it. So. The biggest fucking strength of Insect Glaive is that you will always have access to a good hit zone, right? You can always aerial reposition somehow to get a good hit zone, and that is its biggest strength. Its high mobility gives you like the ability to do things like But the biggest weakness of this weapon is also your biggest burst option is like your fucking bug drill, and that's very positioning dependent. Against things like headlocking Kushala, headlocking Teostra, you can't fucking do it. You don't help like whatsoever. You don't have a Helm Breaker, you don't have a TCS, you don't have a PR, you don't have anything like that. Your entire kit is consistent, constant damage, and you never get anything that helps you with headlocks and shit. But that is the thing about this weapon. You're about doing consistent damage, not a lot of damage at small burst. Do a tutorial using keyboard and mouse? Oh, okay. So what, what are the buttons for this? Vault. There you go, that's your tutorial. What's it? You've done it. Congratulations, you've played Insect Glaive. So Insect Glaive does have a variety of poke moves, so you really want to mix and match them depending on how fast the opening is. For example, forward triangle neutral circle is a really good punish on Velkana's little dash. If you have good enough positioning. If you have a slightly larger opening on the ground than just a poke, you should lead it into a Tornado Slash. Tornado Slash is your strongest grounded mood by far, so you should really try and find openings that you can actually use it on. Again, the timings of all of these are a bit different, so mix and match and see which ones work for you. Other useful moves include Neutral Triangle. It has really high reach, so it's really good in specific niche situations. Otherwise, the only other thing you have to remember about your grounded moves is that you can Kinsect cancel them. If you aim and shoot your Kinsect during the end lag of a move, it'll cancel a little bit of the end lag and make your move a lot safer. And if you hold back circle after some grounded moves, you can perform the dodge slash, which is useful for just quickly repositioning out of another hit. Alright, so next you have your fucking aerial game, which is pretty straightforward. You have four options in the air, and they're all good for different things. Your clutch claw attack, it's a clutch claw. It's also your fastest way to descend from the sky. If you ever need to get the fuck out the sky quickly, and don't mind the end lag on the end, this is your fastest way to get out the fucking sky. Or against AT Valk, when AT Valk flies, you just vault, grab it, and then it will- what the fuck is that hitbox? And it will just go flying. Like, it will stop it flying, because you've grabbed onto it. Then next is... well, this thing, your helicopter. The main thing about your helicopter is that it just goes really far, so use this tool for repositioning if you mess up a vault. Don't use it for damage or for mounting, it's not good at either of those. You can also use it for monsters that fly around in the air if you just want to get a little bit of poke on them before you actually try to get them out of the air. The best move in the fucking game, which is your old mate, old faithful DT. This is just y your damage move, this move is just, like, this move is OP. 
<laughs> this move is one of the reasons why Insectlave is actually good. If you can use this move, use this fucking move. Because it's insanely broken. Like, just look at the amount of Kinseg Drill ticks you get with this fucking move. You get another 600 damage on this goddamn thing. This is insane. This move is fucking busted. So, there's a few things to note about this, and that is that DT has these two moves, like these follow-up hits, and they are uncancelable. You cannot mess with these moves. These moves, no matter what you do, they will always go through those two follow-up hits from your DT, which means your DT is surprisingly unsafe. Oh yeah, to top it off, it also leads into Tornado Slash, your other hilariously strong move, just to make DT it just that much better. Also, dodge slashing after a DT is a really nice way to reposition if you're gonna miss the Tornado Slash follow-up. But yeah, pretty much, your last move is this fucking... this thing. This move sucks. This move's terrible. The only reason you'd ever use this move is if you want to mount. This is your best mountain move, but otherwise it's dog shit. It's, it's, it's complete dog shit. Uh, the most, like, this, this piece of tech is really useful, so like, it's just a fucking recall bug into an instant vault. Because normally when you recall your bug, it takes this long to vault. You see that? It takes a really long time because of this weird swinging animation. That's how long it takes. I'm mashing the vault button after I recall. Recall tech makes it so you can literally just instantly vault and have your Kinsect back mid-air and still get the buffs for it. If you can, do it. Because having a Kinsect drill after your vault, like after your DT, it's just like fucking, just, it's like 30% free damage. And the way you do this is, as you're moving, you recall the Kinsect, you stop moving, and then you vault. So when you do it really quick, it just, it just flows together like that. You can never up-down. Up-downing with this weapon is, like, fucking practically impossible. Because in order to DT up and down, let's see if I can do it on this. You have to physically vault away, wait, backdash back in, and then DT. So a lot of the time, you it's all about like where you're standing, and a lot of that. Because that's super easy, that's super quick. You can never up down, that's the number one thing. You should never stand at where you want to land. Tell them about the health buff. Oh yeah, there is a green buff that is just healing. <laughs> uh, it, it's literally, if you hit like the tail on some areas, you just get healed. It's really not that useful. It's kind of annoying, honestly. I don't fucking like it. Oh, Vela's got a broom, dude. <laughs> Pretty much against AT Velk, you want the head and the wings tenderized. It's super easy in multiplayer. When you start the fight, you want to instantly Kinsec buffs, and then you DT towards the head, and then you just fucking Tornado slash the head. So for the tail swing, it's really annoying in multi, but you literally aim for the head and DT it. Against this move, you wait and DT inward, and then hit the head. <laughs> so against this move, you know where its head is aiming, so you just try and DT the head. You can hit it once with Kinsec, recall, cancel, DT again. <laughs> See, look, quick move, you poke it, you see? Against something like this, we grab it to make it lower it, we tenderize it because the animation's there, and we flinch it because this game sucks. But really, th there is nothing much to explain to this other than you just DT constantly because that's literally how this fight works. Like, unless the AI is like ungodly awful, Insect Lave can kind of cope with it and still do pretty well. It was just, I'm just bad at this game. We know it's gonna land. We just DT it again. Proc it. Oh. We know where it's gonna land, so we DT it again real quick. See if we can snipe the head here. Nice, we got it. Oh, we have a weapon down. Alright, on the weapons down, you actually wanna wedge yourself like in here real quick. Also, we should probably retenderize. Thank you. And the second it starts moving, you want to vault forward in DT. Like, literally the second it starts moving. I'll show you the proper head break. When you head break, you stand in here. Triangle, circle, circle. Three times. And this is the third one, third tornado slash. You want to poke it again. As it moves forward, you jump forward, you DT again. Unlucky one of my hits got eaten up by a wing, but that's like the best punish you can probably do against Fatalis on a head break. And that's about it. I could make a couple more videos going to more specific things. 
delving more in depth about certain moves, positionings, uh, kinsect buffs, all that good stuff, but honestly, I think for a general guide, this is fine. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. I'll uh, leave a couple links in the description of good speedrunners, good insect glaive resources, all that good stuff. And I do stream on Twitch occasionally. If you've got any questions, I'll see if I can answer them. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Have a good day.